Gretchen Carlson and Julie Roginski are known for their brave choice to stand up against sexual harassment at Fox News. The next step of that fight, their new anti-NDA initiative, Lift Our Voices, which both women are here with me now to talk about. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. So just to get us started, uh, what is Lift Our Voices? Take it, Julie. Well, Lift Our Voices was designed as an organization, a nonprofit organization, to make sure that women no longer, have, not just women, but men as well, have to be no longer bound by mandatory non-disclosure agreements when it comes specifically to toxic work environment issues. So, for example, if your boss is doing something to you that you don't want him to be doing, you shouldn't have to sign a piece of paper upon employment or upon termination to never talk about that. The more we talk about these things, the less they happen, the less they happen, the less we need to litigate. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, I would just echo that both Julie and I have NDAs from yeah. our experiences at Fox. And you know from, from my story for mm -hmm. three and a half years ago that when my settlement happened, I got a public apology, which was very progressive for the time. I also was given the ability to talk about harassment in the workplace, and I've been busy doing tons of advocacy work on mm -hmm. the Hill and now with Lift Our Voices. But you know, look, we've moved really far forward in a short period of time. And this is sort of the next phase in, in the revolution, if you will. Mm -hmm. And if I would have known that we would have moved this quickly, I would have fought hard to not sign that NDA. And I'm sure that yeah. Julie agrees with that, because this is a way that our culture has been OK with shutting women up. Mm -hmm. And I think we've seen over the last three years, women are rising up mm -hmm. and they're saying, uh, Probably enough is enough, hmm. and we don't want to be silenced anymore. Well, as part of this, uh, as part of this work, um, you just wrote a letter to the presidential campaigns. Um, have you heard from uh, them? Um, what would you like? To, how would you like them to respond? We'd love for them to sign on. We'd love for them to say that you're absolutely right. There is no place to cover up hostile work issues. We're not only not going to do that on our own campaigns, but more importantly, we're going to lead the charge in making sure this does not happen anywhere in the country. The president really has the ability to set the tone for the nation and the people running to be president and the current president really should stand up and say this is not the kind of culture we want to be creating for workers all across this country. And we're really optimistic that we're going to get the candidates to sign on to this initiative. Mm -hmm. um, that will be forthcoming. They were all sent a letter this morning at 9 a.m. Eastern time. And we will be updating the story on our social media handles. Um, and the New York Times will be updating it as we get responses. Mm -hmm. Would you basically like to see them uh, make the issue of NDAs more central to their campaigns? Yes, and in the next debate. So there's a debate Thursday night. And we will be sending the letter as well to the moderators. You know, one of the frustrations that we've had in watching sort of the campaigns and debates unfold thus far is that they really haven't focused on female issues. Mm -hmm. And they haven't focused on forced arbitration clauses that also keep us silent. They haven't focused that much on equal pay um, or women getting promoted and seats in the boardroom. And they haven't focused on non-disclosure agreements. Mm -hmm. And so it's our hope that in having this public platform that they will take note and ask those questions as well Thursday night. Mm. Well, uh, in recent years, you actually have done some series and documentaries uh, showcasing the stories of women who are uh, not in traditional office spaces uh, who are also tackling these issues. Um, do you have a plan of how you're going to reach women uh, who are more on the margins, um, you know, women of color, poor women, uh, you know, women who don't necessarily have the, the legal or financial resources to, to deal with this issue? You know, it's very interesting. Gretchen and I, we keep saying we're going to be just fine. We have the platform and the voice to be able to do this by virtue of where we were and by virtue of the fact that Gretchen's had a couple of shows now, movies made about her without, unfortunately, you're being able mm -hmm. to, to talk about it because of your NDA. But we've heard repeatedly from women, the kinds of women that you're talking about, women who were fired because they were pregnant and had to sign an NDA to get a severance package, women who were just starting out in their careers, had to sign an NDA as part of employment and didn't realize that this would prevent them from ever talking about the hostile issues that they encountered, so on and so forth. And those are the kinds of women who predators prey on much more so than high-profile women because of the fact that they don't have as much of a voice to stand up to that. And that's what we want to make sure we end in this country. It's not acceptable for some women, because of the profile that they have, to be treated in one way, but for women who don't have that profile or the financial means to not be able to get a lawyer, to not be able to fight NDAs, to not be able to look at a piece of paper that they get upon termination or upon uh, employment and say, oh, wait, paragraph 87 of this contract says A, B, or C. Most women don't have access to those kinds of means, and that's what we want to do. That's the people we're well, fighting and for. Alex, I think you know that my whole mission over the last three and a half years has been to help all women mm -hmm. and to make this world a better place for women. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're intending to do. So they can easily go to liftourvoices.com or they can text lift 797979 and they just sign up and they join our fight and we're doing the work for them. Mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're financially setting up this organization with our own means because we want to help 
all the other women out there who mm. maybe don't have the same resources. And even if you do have resources, please sign up because, mm -hmm. listen, there's power in numbers. One of my favorite quotes is that one woman can make a difference, mm -hmm. but together we rock the world. Mm -hmm. And that's what we intend to do with this initiative. We're going to create an army of women and men who are going to be so powerful that companies are going to have no choice but to get on the right side of history, as well as presidential candidates. Mm. One of the things you mentioned is that um, you've really tried to work on behalf of all women. What do you say to women who might feel a little bit skeptical and say, like, oh, look, you know, have that affiliation with Fox News, uh, feel uh, hesitant or even uh, alienated by the content on Fox News and say, how are they going to stand up for me? Well, first of all, we have not been there. I've not been there in three and a half years. Julie was there for a year after me. She's yep. not been there for two and a half years. And this issue is apolitical. So, I mean, as I've told you before, I'm an independent. I have been my whole life. Mm -hmm. But be before somebody decides to do something toxic to you in the workplace, they don't ask you what party you're in. Quite honestly, they don't really care. And so this issue is for every woman. And by the way, almost every woman has a story. And so politics are not involved in this. And that's exactly what our letter says to the presidential candidates. Mm. This is apolitical. So please come together mm. and do something right for women in our country. And let's be clear, these provisions are being enforced not just by Fox News, a conservative network. They're being enforced by progressive politicians. They're being enforced by apolitical corporations. This is not an issue that's just for people who are Fox News. There are progressives who are tremendously impacted by this issue, and it really runs across the entire gamut of the political spectrum. Julie and has to sign an NDA with the governor of New Jersey right now mm. because she worked on his campaign. Yep. She can't talk about it. I can. And he's a Democrat. He's a progressive yes, politician. progressive Democrat. Yep. So this, that, that's proof that this crosses over all political lines. Mm. I definitely hear you on the apolitical point. Um, but what would you say to people who have seen you say things on Fox News that they felt alienated by? How could they trust you? Mm -hmm. Well, listen, I'll just look at my track record over the last three and a half years and all the work that I've been doing on behalf of women. Mm -hmm. I mean, this has become my mission. Mm -hmm. And with regard to Fox News, listen, we all have producers in the morning who set the agenda. And there are many times that you don't agree with what you're going to be saying that particular day. And you pick your battles. Mm -hmm. And if I think if you look back on my past history, you will see that I had many small protests along the way. Mm -hmm. I did what I could. I had to be very careful. Well, I do want to talk more about the work that you're doing uh, and, of course, how we've seen this play out uh, in the media. Um, and so you both did recently ask Fox News to get out of your NDAs. Um, have you gotten a response from the network? No. Hmm. <laughs> Hope springs eternal. We keep waiting. Well, uh, and, you know, another network that's obviously tied up in uh, similar issues is NBC Universal. Um, how did it feel to see them agree to uh, let women who are in NDAs get out of theirs? That really sparked yeah. our, our movement um, and the creation of Lift Our Voices. Um, however, I, I think it remains to be seen whether or not that actually holds true. Um, we are optimistic and thankful that they made that mm. announcement. Um, we hope that other companies will follow suit. And listen, if, if they don't, the end result is, I think you can tell from the work that we've been doing, we don't really give up. Mm -hmm. And so we'll go to the Hill mm -hmm. and we will take the New Jersey law that just passed that does not force women to sign NDAs anymore with regard to harassment in the workplace. We'll take that language and we'll bring it to the Hill and we will pass federal legislation on this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, if you want to be on the right side of history, then get in line now and make the changes on behalf of all women or it's going to happen for you. Mm. Now, Julie, you referred uh, to your lawsuit in the past as kind of a scarlet letter. Um, how have you felt outcast by other uh, folks in the media or just the industry at large? Well, again, I was very fortunate when yeah. I filed my lawsuit in that I had an entire separate career, which I continue to have. I'm a political consultant. Um, in fact, you asked about how people feel about Fox News. Mm. I'm, I'm a progressive, mm -hmm. and I've always been one. Um, and this is not an issue that, again, should be for progressives or for conservatives. But I will also say that um, for a lot of my friends who did stand up to Fox News and were brave enough to file a lawsuit or to say something publicly, they're not working anymore. And some of them are having a real hard time making ends meet as a result of that. And I think it's more of a cultural issue that we need to talk about. It's not so much that one industry affected them in one way. Um, it's the fact that women who have the courage to stand up shouldn't be punished for it. They should be rewarded for it. Mm. And as a culture, we need to stand behind them and join with them. That's something else that Gretchen and I are doing. This is really a cultural shift that we're mm -hmm. trying to effectuate. It's not just about going after company X or campaign Y. It's really about ensuring that anybody who has the courage to come forward. And let me tell you, when Gretchen Carlson came forward, I was in Fox, I was at Fox News the mm -hmm. day she came forward or the day she filed her lawsuit. It was truly the movie's called Bombshell. Bombshell does not begin to describe the courage that she had to do it. Not a lot of people had her back. 
Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that's a message that people need to understand, that we need to have the backs of women and, and men who have the courage to stand up, speak truth to power, and instead of marginalizing them, we need to really enhance them. Gretchen has had a tremendous um, professional renaissance, mm -hmm. in lack of a better word, um, after she filed her lawsuit. And I think it's a huge inspiration to a lot of women. But as a society, we really need to make sure that every woman is uplifted that way mm. after she has the courage to speak up. Mm -hmm. Ditto. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the movie Bombshell, and uh, your MDA pr actually prevents you from being able to comment on the accuracy of Bombshell, uh, of course, other projects like uh, The Loudest Voice. Um, are there any thoughts you can share? You know, have you watched these series? Will you see Bombshell? I did see The Loudest Voice. I have not seen Bombshell, but I intend to. We've been a little busy setting right. up this organization over the last, it's only a week old now. Um, but listen, you know, Hollywood takes liberties with the mm. storyline, so I'm expecting to see a lot of things that aren't accurate. Mm -hmm. um, but I've had to take the high road and just say that big picture, it's great that we're continuing to have this dialogue. Mm. And if even just one more woman comes forward as a result of seeing these projects, then that makes it worth it. But the, uh, the interesting thing is Julie can actually speak about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I have seen Bombshell. Um, and the one thing I would say about Bombshell is, and not just Bombshell, but about how this whole case was covered and the story of what Gretchen Carlson did, it's very interesting. I don't think that people truly, whether it's a movie um, or even most media, has really understood the impact that her case had. So mm. she was all alone. I, I said that before. Mm. And she did something that really had virtually no choice of succeeding. I mean, when it happened, everybody uh, was in the building. Everybody looked at each other and said, wow. And, oh, poor Gretchen, this will go down in flames and that'll be the end of Gretchen Carlson. What she was able to do and able to accomplish single-handedly, I mean, a lot of us, listen, I came forward a year later. It's not like I was there with her jumping off the plane without a parachute. Mm -hmm. um, and so were a lot of other people who came to this issue much, much later. And I don't know that there's been a movie, and I did see Bombshell, or mm -hmm. any clear reporting about exactly the kind of impact that she mm -hmm. had on me and on other women in that uh, building who came forward, and on a society, I think, as a whole, mm -hmm. tremendously. So what's next for Lift Our Voices? We're going to keep pushing. We're going to make sure these presidential candidates, and again, we sent it not just to the Democrats, but also we sent it to President Trump. Um, hope springs eternal there, too. Sent it to um, other Republicans running and independents. We are going to keep pushing to make sure that our leaders stand with us, that companies stand with us. And again, they have to understand we're not going away. We're not getting out of the way. This organization is a week old. And look what we've been able to accomplish already. Mm -hmm. We have thousands yeah. of women already right. on board with us. Mm -hmm. And so I would just encourage everyone watching this right. to, to join our fight. Mm -hmm. It's really a mission. It's a mission of hope. And it's, it's, it's late in coming. Mm -hmm. A lot of people thought we had solved this issue. Mm -hmm. We haven't. Mm -hmm. And so we're here to help everyone else mm -hmm. not be silenced anymore. Yep. Mm -hmm. And text LIFT to 797979 to join. Well, thank you both so much for joining me. Thanks, I Alex. appreciate you taking the time. Thanks for having thank us. Thank you. Alex. And up next, David Mack is sitting down with Guy Pierce and Joe Alwyn.